One of the great things about Home Assistant is the ability for you to design whatever dashboard you want in whatever custom way you want to do it. There are a number of options to do this, all the way from just standard loveless cards to mushroom cards to grid cards. And I'm going to be showing you a new one today called Dwayne's Dashboard. The premise behind Dwayne's Dashboard is that you just install it and it auto creates a dashboard based on areas. And it's important that you have your areas defined, as we'll see when we get into this. So let's dig into Dwayne's dashboard, see how easy it is to install it, and see how easy it is to set things up. So let's talk about what Dwayne's dashboard is. Dwayne's Loveless dashboard is a fully auto-generating Home Assistant UI dashboard for desktop, tablet, and mobile. Taking a look at the GitHub page for the dashboard, you can see again that it's auto-generating. This is a non-YAML setup, so those of you that are scared of YAML, don't have to worry about that. And it's based on your Home Assistant areas, as I mentioned before. And you have light and dark themes, just like you have with other stuff. Fully editable in the GUI, no need to edit any YAML file, of course. Before continuing, let's take a moment and talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Take some time and invest in yourself and your personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. With courses in coding, data science, programming foundations and languages, and many others, there is something for everyone. Skillshare even has new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. I'm a lifelong learner, so Skillshare fits right in with that. I can add to skills I already have or learn something entirely new. Skillshare makes it easy because I can take classes anywhere on my computer or my mobile devices. I've always wanted to know more about blockchain. Skillshare has a great beginner's course that provides a solid foundation to launch your journey in the world of blockchain. Everything you need to know about blockchain and its related technologies such as smart contract, Ethereum, as well as blockchain applications is covered. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my video description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? So installing it is super simple. Uh, it's an HACS, Home Assistant Community Store type of integration. So we're gonna go over to HACS and we're gonna click on integrations. And we're going to go over here and we're going to click on this explore download or explore and download repositories and we're going to find it so if you search for duane's dashboard you'll see it right here as an integration click on that and it'll bring up that same kind of github page with all the information in it scroll down to the bottom and then you have uh down here this download this repository with hacs click on it it will download it for you or you click on download it and then we'll install it for you and then because it's an integration, you will need to reboot your Home Assistant instance. As it says right here, we are pending a restart. So you can click on this, or you actually you can go back here, click on navigate. It will take you to this YAML page and can check your configuration. And then once it's valid, where it shows here, click on restart, then confirm. And then your whole, whole Home Assistant will restart and the integration will be ready to go. All right, Home Assistant has started, as you see here. You'll, be, you'll still be on this page right here. So you can hit the C key on your keyboard and navigate to integrations. So I'll type integrations, navigate to integrations. And what we wanna do now is we wanna add an integration. So over here is the add integration button. Click on that and then come over here and search for integration or for Dwayne's dashboard. And it should show up right here. If it doesn't show up here, make sure you uh, clear your cache of your browser. Sometimes it will not show here because the browser has cached your, your uh, version of Home Assistant before you rebooted or reloaded Home Assistant and it won't, be, it won't see it's here. So I'm gonna click on Dwayne's dashboard and I'm gonna click on finish here. And you'll see now that you have Dwayne's dashboard here as a new device. And you can see you have one entity right here and that's Dwayne's dashboard latest version. Now that you have it installed, it will show up over in the sidebar of your Home Assistant instance you should see a Dwayne's dashboard right here. And when you click on it, you're going to get all this stuff that it realized or that it recognizes as entities that belong to areas. Now you have to have an, every entity that you want to show up here in an area. And remember when a minute ago, when I said, if you don't have stuff assigned to an area, it's going to become really apparent. I didn't use areas for most of my stuff before because I didn't have any use for it. 
With Dwayne's dashboard, it's super important that you have every entity you want to show up on the dashboard assigned to an area. And you can actually go into um, the area. So if I click on areas, I can click on here and I can pick an area. Let's just say uh, garage. And I can see the entities that are uh, in this area. You can also go to entities and you can see what area they belong to. Now this is my, uh, my development or test Raspberry Pi. So I don't have it all set up. If we go over to my production system and we do the same exercise and we look at areas, actually let's look at entities first. You'll see that I have all of my things that I care about and these that are not available, I don't care about, but all the ones that I care about are assigned to an area. And you can just kind of see it here. If I were to filter on the area, then you would see that we have stuff in the front yard, we have stuff in the garage, etc. So now that I have all that stuff set up, if I go over to Dwayne's dashboard, and again, remember it's over here on the side. If I click on Dwayne's dashboard, I will then start to see things that are assigned to areas. Now I'll take you through how you can set all of this up. One of the things that you're going to notice right away is you'll probably have a whole bunch of entities that belong to areas and you don't want to see those. So we'll talk about that here in a minute as well. But the basic dashboard is going to be this. You're going to have this area right here. That's kind of a status area. It tells me I have three switches on. I have two climate devices running. So my thermostats are both in cool mode. If there were motion, if I were to set some motion on one of my devices, you'll see here, I now have a motion pop up. That's the motion for my motion sensor in the room I'm at right now. And then we'll talk about favorites in a few minutes. I've got a couple of items here on favorites. And then I have 15 areas and each of these areas is defined. Again, if I hit areas here, you can create areas by coming over and clicking on this create area uh, section, create an area, and you can actually add a picture to it if you want to. Uh, but I have plenty of areas right now. And these are all the areas and how many devices I have in each area. So going back over to Dwayne's dashboard, you'll see that I have all of these areas defined and I have things in them. In addition to that, you can also see that each one of these areas uh, shows how many entities or devices are on or off in that area. So for, for this, in this case, my living room, I have uh, zero lights on, zero, zero. I have pretty much zero lights. Here I have, and um, when I make some movement here, you can see that I have motion in the guest bedroom. That's my studio office as well. I've got front yard, backyard. I've got one switch on in the laundry room. And if I click on any of these entities, you can see what it is, right? Uh, this is the switch that's on right here. And then I have one switch on in the garage, one switch on the attic, and then I have my environment. Now on these different cards you have here, you have the option to edit these. So I'll click on the, the three dots there, click on enable edit mode. And now I can do things like change the icon and set an area floor. So I don't have it grouped by floor right now, but I can do that. So let me turn off edit mode and turn on group by floor. And now I have uh, 15 areas on the first floor. I have a couple of areas that don't have a floor assigned at all. I have these areas that are set to the second floor. Because of real estate on the screen, I don't find this super useful because uh, I don't really need to group them by floor. So I'll just ungroup it and leave it this way. But you can group it and it's important to assign each area to a floor if you wanna do it that way. Okay, so back to edit mode. We'll go into edit mode here. And you can uh, sort of, uh, other than just making uh, icon changes or assigning floors to this, you can also move these things around by dragging these little things here and you can put them in some sort of order uh, if you wanna move them to different places. So if I want both my climates up here, I would come down here uh, and move both of my climates to the very top so that they were right here at the very beginning and they were available to me. So those are the things you can do with edit mode in this section right here. So we'll get out of edit mode there and we'll just pick one of these uh, areas. Let's go to attic and actually let's go to lab. This is a good one. So you can see in my lab, really I only have a couple of devices in the lab, but I have a whole bunch of things showing up in here that are entities that show up as the, part of this area. So let's go into edit mode. And again, you go over here to the three dots for this section and go into edit mode. And now you see you have a whole bunch of options here. First of all, you have all of the items that are showing up as entities in that area. 
And then down below here, you'll have areas that are unavailable. And if I decide I want to hide one of these entities that I'm not interested in, like this right here, it says unavailable, so I don't want to show it anyway. I'm going to click on hide entity in Dwayne's dashboard, and that should drop out. Come down here in the hidden entities section. So all of the entities down here will be hidden, and all these will show, and I can do that for any of these. Now, if you want to start from scratch, because you have a whole bunch of entities and you're only interested in a few, you can hide all of the entities by clicking that section or that uh, link right there. Now you have everything hidden and you would go through here and you would take and you would enable entities you were most interested in. Uh, there's CPU load. Let's look at um, what else we have on this, the Synology NAS. I want my drive two status, drive three status, drive four status, all this show up. And if I come back up here, I have my CPU, CPU utilization and then three of my four drives status is showing up. Now these show is unavailable, right? So I wouldn't necessarily enable these. What I need to do down here is find out the actual correct uh, entities for these and then enable those. So if I want to enable temperature, for example, and come back up here, I should see temperature, and it shows 104 degrees here. Let me see if I can blow that up a little bit bigger for you. So there's 104 degrees, and if I come down here and I look at the lab, you'll notice there's a temperature right here. This temperature is reflecting the temperature that's available in the uh, from the entities that are in this particular area. You can see the same thing for attic, the same thing for kitchen, and the same thing for the thermostats, and then the study. Now, if you have multiple temperature units in an area, let's say I have this uh, NAS, and then I also have temperature for that area, a regular thermometer, then it's going to take both of those and kind of average them together. So if you don't want to have the temperature average together, you need to hide, or actually you need to disable an entity. And I'll show you that here. If you click on these three dots again, you have the ability to hide the entity, but you also have the ability to disable the entity. And if I make that small again, so it fits on the screen, disable entity in Dwayne's dashboard. If I click on disable that one, it should go away. And in addition to that, it will no longer be part of the calculation for determining, you know, whatever the value is. So if it was a temperature or a thermometer, it would no longer show that. If you just hide it for an area, it's going to also calculate it as part of the temperature. So this is, is an example of one area in which you have a number of entities that you want to act on all together. All right, so that's that one. Let's look at something a little more calm, a little less cluttered. Let's look at the kitchen. And so in the kitchen, let me just show you what it looks like normally. We have a kitchen counter light, kitchen island light, the back door lock, fridge door sensor, and then we have some, some historic data for the refrigerator. So back into edit mode, we can do some things with these cards to make them look a little bit more like what we want. So for example, this defaults to uh, under entity settings, one row and one column for each screen size. So let me put it back to what it looked like before. We'll just submit that. And now this should drop down to this particular view right here. And if we do the same thing for entity settings on this card, we'll drop this down to one column as well. And now what we have is we have these two as one column and this one as two columns. Now, the, the, uh, the really neat thing about Dwayne's dashboard under entity settings, you can see that you have different row and column sizes for different screen sizes. So right now I'm on an extra large screen because this is a browser window. So if we go over and look at the phone now, you see on the, the screen here, we have three, the fridge temperature, fridge humidity, and fridge battery level are all single column, single row because they're on a small screen. If we go back over here and we change, let's say for example, the entity settings for the fridge temperature, and change under small screen to two columns, submit that, and then we go back over and we look at the phone, we'll see here that on the phone, as soon as it refreshes here, fridge temperature automatically goes to two columns, and fridge humidity and fridge battery level also stay where they were before, because they're set to one column for a small screen. Now, if we go back over to our settings and we go ahead and change fridge humidity to two columns for a small screen, you'll see that it also updates and it also will change that to two columns on the phone or the small screen. 
Now the medium screen is most likely something like a tablet, so your screen sizes are going to vary depending on your device. Typically a phone screen will always be the small screen. So if you want all of these to line up, let's just do one more for good measure. We'll make them all look the same. This has already set the battery level to two columns for big screen, but it's still one column for small screen. If I set that to two columns here and submit that, and then we go back over and we look at the phone, you'll see that it updates here in a second and it'll show all three devices or all three entities as two column and it spans across the entire length or width of the phone screen. For those of us that like to have symmetrical looking screens, this kind of layout's nice because you can get everything just kind of lined up on the screen. And since this is the only thing on this screen, then your, uh, your stuff will show up and fill up the screen like it should. And let's just take a look at the main home screen now from uh, while we're on the phone. So we look at the home, main home screen while we're on the phone. You can see here that we have, again, our bar at the top. We have our different snapshots and our favorites. And then we have our different areas as we scroll through here. And what we were just looking at was the kitchen. And we just scroll down here to the kitchen and I click on kitchen. It brings us up the screen for the three different uh, entities and then the switches that are in that room as well or that area. And then we can just click the, the arrow and we can go back to different areas. If we want to look at this one here. We have three entities here and then clicking the arrow arrow on the screen takes us back. And then of course you have your thermostat or climate control for this area and your other one for this area. So on the phone, it looks very nice and you can control again, how you want stuff to, to, to look. So you can take these and you can change these entities however you want to. And then you can make them look differently on a tablet and make them look different on a big screen. So for these, if we want to change these settings real quick and make them two columns again, or you can even make them four columns. So we could just make them look kind of like the phone with four columns. We'll make this one four columns as well. And we'll make the final one four columns so that they all look the same. Remember, this is four columns on a big screen. It doesn't affect your phone tablet screen. And by the way, anytime you make a change on one of the, on the dashboard itself, any device that is currently displaying the dashboard will auto refresh that device. So as I'm doing this, I'm watching that my phone over here on the left hand side is actually changing and updating as we go, although it's not changing any view because it's still considered a small screen. OK, so that's how you edit these areas. And then if you want to put this stuff at the top or move these things around, you do it just like you do anything else. You could put these two together and then have a row of other entities and put these back together. And again, these are all the hidden devices right here or unavailable and then the hidden devices. So you can come through here and unhide anything else you want to hide. All right, so let's go out of, out of edit mode here for this. And the concept is pretty much the same for everything here. You just take an area and you edit it using this right here. And then with that editing, you can make it look however you want to on the various different screens. Couple other settings on this page. There is a settings button up here. It allows you to disable the welcome message. There is a welcome message that says, hello, whatever user this is. Whatever user you happen to be logged into with uh, on Home Assistant will show up here. So I don't need that. You can also disable the clock and you can enable the older version of the layout if you happen to be a V2 user. This is V3, by the way. Some people have talked about V2 two being a little bit more clean or a little cleaner, uh, have a little bit more control over some stuff. And then you can choose your weather entity and your alarm entity. And all of that here uh, is depicted. This is your alarm. So if you click on this right here, you can set your alarm panel. And if you click on weather, depending on your weather station or weather area that you choose, your weather entity, you'll get information showing up in this weather card as well. All right, let's 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 talk about how we can add some special cards or different cards to our Dwayne's dashboard here. I'm going to take the attic, for example, and I've got some of these cards here that are temperature or voltage sensors. So I'm going to go into edit or enable edit mode. And you'll notice you have an add card button up here. I'm going to click on that. And you can now add any card that's available on the Loveless dashboard or the Loveless UI to Dwayne's dashboard. I want to add a gauge card because I want the temperature to do certain things. Now remember, you get the same type of setup here, different sizes based on different screens. 
and my entity is going to be something related to the attic. So let's do uh, attic temperature. So let me find that. Here it is right here, attic air temperature. And I'll just call it attic temp. And the unit's going to be Fahrenheit. Theme is optional. And then minimum and maximum. So minimum is going to be 20. And maximum is going to be a 125. And you can define severity. So this is the same way you would do this within the card itself. You're just adding it to Dwayne's dashboard. And under severity down here, you would say green would be uh, up to, let's just say 70. Yellow would be 90 and red would be 110. And then of course you can display these things like this as well. Display the colors on here and I just wiped it out. So let me do it again, 60, uh, 90 and 120, or let's do 80 and 120 or 110. All right, so there we are, cold. It's okay. It's getting warm. Oh my gosh. It's, it's the sun. All right. And then we submit that. And now we'll have a gauge card on here. Now, one of the caveats to adding these custom cards, and I'm not sure why it's like this. It kind of messes things up for me and makes these cards kind of hard to use is now you'll notice I have no way of moving this card anywhere. All I can do with this card is change the size of the card itself. So we're going to keep it square at two and two for the big screen here. And it, all it does is make it bigger, right? I can't move these up to where that is. I can still move these within the area they're in down here. But once you add a custom card, it's just up there. And if we look at this now on the phone, we'll see here, if I go to the attic, you'll see on here that it shows up in line with everything else. Now, if I go in here and I do an edit and make this two and two for small, it might look okay. It just doesn't let you put uh, anything in, in order. It can't change the order of where it goes. So looking back at the phone now, it should pop over here in just a second and you'll see it change. There it is. So, I mean, that looks okay. The idea behind Dwayne's dashboard again is that it auto generates all this stuff for you. This kind of uh, card here we, where we have this custom card, you know, that's, that's fine and dandy. Uh, if you want to do that. And you can build a whole dashboard here under Dwayne's dashboard using just this and then hide the rest of this. All right, so that's how you add a custom card. Now let's talk about a couple other things here. If we get out of edit mode here, you'll notice um, up top, I have a few different, these are called pages. I have an ad guard page, tells me how many queries I've had, whether my ad guard protection is on, filtering is on, etc. I have a system, an update information page that's using a blueprint. And this is information related to updates as well as just system uh, resource usage. And then I have a battery page, which I think is really awesome. This battery page here gives me an overview of all my battery devices and what their status or what their levels are. And how you do this is we'll go into more here. And you have an option. Well, here's all your pages. You have an option under edit to create a new more page. And you go to Dwayne's dashboard blueprint and Dwayne has a bunch of different blueprints and you can add them. So coming down to this Dwayne's dashboard blueprints GitHub page, you then get a listing of all of the different cards and pages. And there are some cards you can use here as well, but page blueprints are what we're talking about right now. You've got eight panels. If you look at this one, you've got a, a dashboard that creates eight different panels. You've got ad guard, which I showed you birthdays from a calendar energy, uh, following the ISS. So if you were interested in following the International Space Station, you could put that on your as a dashboard or a card. Uh, sorry, a page on the dashboard. And then you have a whole bunch of other ones, the battery page and whatnot. Let's just say I wanted to add an automations page. We'll just look at this one. So I'll click on this. And what I, the way you do this is you go into Dwayne's dashboard and you're going to paste the YAML code in here. And you're going to get the YAML co code by going to the GitHub page, scrolling down to the, the actual the actual GitHub YAML, which is this right here, automation page YAML. And it talks about how to do it kind of here. So click on automation page YAML. I click on raw because that gives me the raw uh, YAML without any kind of HTML formatting. I copy it. So control A and the control C on my keyboard. I'll go to Dwayne's dashboard. I will paste it in here using control V 
come down here and I will click on install blueprint and it tells me it's saved. Now it doesn't actually use it yet. You actually have to tell it to use the blueprint. So here's my automation page a blueprint. Now what it tells you too is that if you don't have some prerequisites installed, it will highlight that here. So I need the scheduler card and I need the search card. Go over to HACS and these are front end items. I'm gonna search for scheduler card. Scheduler card needs to be installed. And look for search card. Same thing, download it, download it again, and we're gonna reload our front end to pull those up. Now, if we click on this and use this blueprint, we know we just installed both of these. So I'm gonna use the blueprint and you can give it an icon and you can add this page in the main nav bar, which I want to do. And that's what's going to show up across the top. Now it says custom search card doesn't exist, probably because we have to reload our, our uh, browser. So I'm going to submit this and I'm going to force a reload by hitting the shift or holding down shift and refresh. And it just depends on your browser and your operating system, how you force a reload by, and clear the cache. And here's the automation page blueprint. And up here, you'll also see the automation page blueprint. We'll click on that and we will see, again, we don't have the search card or the other one. So I'm just going to force another reload. And this is typical of my browser. It's probably installed. It just doesn't show up yet because I really need to close it out and open it back up. But you get the idea. If you want to install a card, you make sure that you have the prerequisites. And then you see that you also have this stuff here. And that's how I did all of these cards across the top. So let's talk about favorites, how I did favorites. If I go over to uh, Front Yard here, and I click on the edit button or edit, enable edit mode. I can go to any one of these items and I can add them to favorites. So let's just say I've already got these two added. You can see them over here. If I want to add this particular front porch light to favorites, I'll click on add to favorites. And then it will add that to the favorites over here. And I can do the same thing for dry, driveway lights, add to favorites. Now I have these things over here. I can go ahead and disable edit mode. I can come over here now and I can click on edit mode in the favorites section and I can move things around wherever I want them to go, just like you can anywhere else. And I can also do the entity settings here. All right, so this video has gotten super, super long. So you get the idea of how Dwayne's dashboard works. You can go through and add all your custom stuff to it. You can change the sizes. You can add pages across the top to your heart's content. Uh, you can change areas, add areas, move things around, add things to areas, uh, disable and enable entities for specific areas, get a quick overview of what things are going on and which things are on or activated in your, uh, your environment. Look at the weather, set the alarm, Take a look at the clock, all kinds of stuff you can do here. So as not to make this video any longer than it needs to be, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any comments about the resizing of things within uh, those screens as well that I just talked about. Thanks for watching the video. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button. And if you are not a channel member, I would appreciate it if you would join the channel, help support me what I do here to be able to make these videos. I, I know this is a super long video today, but it covers a lot of stuff. And Dwayne's dashboard is a pretty powerful auto-generating UI for Home Assistant that you can use if you want to do that. Again, there's lots of ways to do things in Home Assistant, and this is just one of the many dashboard ways. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.